Well, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, Paul's continuing the theme of putting off the old self with its practices and putting on the new self in verse 10, which he says is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. And, and what Paul's describing in, a, in, in this chapter, in this, in this section, is um, really how, how the attributes of Christ begin to be manifested in the life of a true follower of Christ, okay? Um, and and, and uh, in the last section, Paul was saying, look, you've, you've been crucified with Christ. Like you, you've, you've died to that old self, that old identity by which you came to Christ. And now you're being renewed in your new self in knowledge after the image of your creator. Remember Genesis says that, that, that God actually created humanity in the image of God. It says, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. I think it's so interesting when I think about that, that, that what we read in the first chapter of this letter to the Colossians, Paul describing Jesus in verse 15 said this, he's the image of the invisible God. Like we were created in the image of God and the image of God is Jesus. And that's the image that's being renewed in us. We're being renewed in knowledge after the image of our creator and our creator as described in chapter one of Colossians, is Jesus Christ, okay? And so in verse 12, well, the last section, Paul's saying, look, because you've died to, to that old you, that old you's been crucified and is dead and is buried. Like, leave that old you, that old identity, that old nature, leave that in the grave with all of its practices, with all of its desires, with all of its attributes and all of its character traits. Leave all that in the grave, take that off, put it away. And now he says in verse 12, put on, okay? Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. I love the way Paul describes us here, don't you? Put on then as God's chosen ones. Isn't that a, amazing, crazy? Like he's describing you right there. You're God's chosen one. Like if you're in Christ and you're a follower of Christ, you've been redeemed by the blood of Christ, you are his chosen one. Ephesians chapter 2 says we were chosen in him from before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons and daughters, according to the good pleasure of his will in Christ Jesus. Praise God, right? I feel like I don't deserve this to be called God's chosen one. To be called holy, like for sure, I don't deserve that. Beloved, like, thank you, Lord. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Like, just take, take that on. Take that on. Let that just settle on you. That new identity. That's who you are in Christ. You're chosen of God. You're holy in Christ. You're beloved in Christ. Okay? That is your identity. That's who you are. That's all that matters. Like whatever your identity was before Christ, all that matters now is that you're chosen and you're holy and you're beloved of God. He says, put on then, chosen one, holy, beloved, put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving one another as Christ or as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Okay, so he begins to list these, these character traits, these attributes that we should be putting these things on. And what Paul's describing here are the attributes of Jesus, okay? It, it reminds me of another list, a similar list in a similar section in Galatians chapter five, where Paul in Galatians chapter five begins to say, hey, this is the fruit of the flesh. Okay, this is the fruit. And he talks about all these, you know, sins and wickedness and, and, and terrible things. And then in verse 22, he says, but the fruit of the spirit is love and joy, and peace and patience, kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. He's listing the attributes, the character traits of Jesus. And here in, in, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, Paul's saying this. Look, you've died to, to, to your old self. You've died to your old nature. And, and I want you to put on the new nature, the one that's being renewed in knowledge after the image of Jesus Christ himself. I want you to put on compassionate hearts and kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. Put on peace. Put on love. Okay? And what he's saying to us is, put on Jesus, put on Christ, put on your Savior. That's your identity. That's who you are. 
You, you are being renewed in the image of Jesus. And that's who you're to put on every single day. In Galatians chapter 3, he says something similar. He says, for as many as you, of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In Romans chapter 13, verse 14, he says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Paul's saying, I want you to live into God's original design for humanity, which is the image of God. That's that image that's being restored and renewed and, and resurged in you. That, 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 that's being formed in you. That's the thing that should begin to manifest in you. That, that like Christ should be able to live in you and through you. Like he came to this earth and he gave his life for you. He didn't deserve to die. He didn't deserve to be crucified. He didn't deserve to be mocked. He didn't deserve to be cursed. He didn't deserve any of it, but he gave up his life and his comfort and his peace. He gave up his blood for you so that you would be able to live. And now you give your life to him on this earth, that he would be able to live in you and through you, be manifested in your life and touch the lives of the people around you. Paul said in another place, we are the aroma of Christ to those who are being saved and to those who are perishing. Okay, in other words, as we live and interact and move in this earth, as Christ begins to be manifested more and more and more in us and through us, like people literally sense the presence of Christ in us. He says, put on then this new self, this new identity. And part of that identity is compassionate hearts that care about the people around us. We don't, we're not just apathetic to the needs, the pain, the hurt, the, the, the lives, the, the things that our people are going through around us. Put on compassionate hearts. He says, put on humility. Okay, humility is just humbleness, being humble people, people who don't think we know everything, that we don't have to win every argument on the internet. Like put on compassionate hearts. He says, put on kindness. How rare is kindness in our culture? People are just mean. People are mean and rude and selfish and narcissistic in our culture, but we're not supposed to be like that anymore because that's connected to our old nature, right? And we don't have to participate anymore in that because that old self has died. We're supposed to put all that away. Anger, wrath, malice, strife, all that. That's last week's Bible study. But he says, what I, want you, what I want you to do is I want you to put on compassionate hearts and kindness and humility and meekness, which is like, I have the ability to, 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 to destroy that person in an argument on Facebook right now. But you know what? I'm not going to. I'm just gonna actually show them the love of Christ instead. And meekness, meekness is like a, like a gun, right? But in a holster. Like it has the ability to do what it's going to do, but it doesn't have to do it. it. It's actually restrained. It's in its holster. I have the ability to, to maybe flip that person off back on the freeway, but, but I'm not going to. I have the ability to destroy that person in an argument. I have the ability to beat that person or verbally abuse that person or, or take advantage of that person, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Put on compassionate hearts and kindness and humility and meekness and patience, right? Oh, this lady's driving so slow on the freeway. Like that's, that's me, unfortunately. I, I, I need to put on patience, put on patience, bearing with one another. And, and if one has a complaint against another, he says, forgiving one another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. He's saying is like, this isn't an option for you. You don't get to hold a grudge. You don't get to to make a list and, and, and keep that list and keep that in the back of your mind. You don't get to not forgive. Like we are that unforgiving servant. We're the one who owed the master this unpayable debt of 50 million bedillion dollars. And we begged him for mercy. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to forgive the debt. You're free to go. And then we go out to our fellow servant who owes us 20 bucks. And we're like, if you don't pay me, I'm going to send you to debtor's prison. He's like, no, you don't get to do that. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving one another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. Like that's, that's, that old unforgiveness thing, that's part of the old self. Put that away. Put it away, believer. That's not you anymore. You're the chosen one. You're a chosen one. Holy and beloved. And, and these are your character traits now. He says, and above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. God is love. Put on love. Put on Christ. Okay, love. 
it, it, it's you're manifesting Christ to the people around you. Like it's pretty hard to cuss somebody out in love. It's pretty hard to flip them off on the freeway in love. It's hard to take advantage of somebody in love. It's hard to, to just focus on the fact that they're in a different political party than you and argue with them for 17 hours on the internet in love, right? He says, put on love. He says, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. He says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. I like his phrasing here. Let the peace of Christ rule. This reminds me of the Lord's prayer where we say, your kingdom come, your will be done. This is something that I pray. I pray this like every day over, over yes, the earth, you know, as Christ commanded, but, but I pray it even over myself. Like I pray that your kingdom would come, your will would be done in my, in my mind, in my body, in my, in my heart, that, that you you would rule and reign. And that's what we're asking for. When we ask for his kingdom to come, I pray it over my, my mind, my body, I, I just prayed over my spirit, my heart. I prayed over my wife and my children. I prayed over my home. I prayed over my business. I prayed over my neighbors. I prayed over my extended family. Lord, that your kingdom would come, your will be done. But what we're asking for, what we ask for that, is we're asking, I want you to rule and reign in my life. I want you to rule and reign on this earth just as you do in heaven. And this is what this is saying. Let the, let the peace of Christ rule and reign in your heart. That means that you don't get to worry and have anxiety and, and and try to figure it all out and stress all out because it's all, it's on me. I got to figure this out and fix it. No, 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 no. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, okay? In another place in Philippians, Paul says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So what he's saying is, look, when life is hard, when people are cruel, when, when we face trials and persecutions and when we lack and, and have needs, like take all that to him. Take it all to him by prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known to the Lord. And then he says, let the shalom of God, the peace of God, the past all understanding, that shalom of God, wholeness and wellness and completeness and provision and all the things we need. Let that reign and rule in our hearts over the worry, over the anxiety. And you go, you know what, God? You got this because you're my king and you rule and reign in my heart. And he says, and be thankful in verse 15. Let the peace of God rule, Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. He says, and be thankful. How many times has Paul told us in Colossians to be thankful? Why? Because None of this is something we deserve. I don't deserve to be called a chosen one. I don't deserve to be called holy. I don't deserve to be called beloved. I don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't deserve to be uh, to be a citizen of a new kingdom, the kingdom of the beloved son. I don't deserve any of this. But God loved me so much. He sent his only begotten son that all who believe in him, all, anyone, who believes in him. Anyone who comes to him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He says, God didn't send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, his attitude toward this world, uh, uh, Christians, it is love. It's mercy. It's forgiveness. It's grace. Okay. It's compassion. God the Father has a compassionate heart for this world. His, his heart toward this world is kindness and humility and meekness and patience. It's bearing with us. It's forgiving us. It's loving us, right? And these are the character traits that God wants to manifest through us into the lives of the people who are around us in our everyday lives. This is letting the peace of Christ, letting the character of Christ, let, letting the attributes and the, 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 the power of Christ rule and reign in us to the point that the people around us can feel it and experience it and know Jesus because they know us. Like, like Jesus told Philip, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. We want it to be said of us, if you've seen me, you've seen my Savior. And you know, I have not got this down. I, I don't think I can accurately say that in any way at this point, but that's my hope. And that's my desire. And that's my prayer that God, you would just move in my heart to shape me and mold me and change me and take out those parts of me 
that, that, that are still connected to that old self, that old nature. Take those parts of, out of me that don't reflect your character. And, and I pray that you would live in me and that you, God, would manifest yourself in me and through me in love and patience and meekness and kindness and compassion to the people around me, that they would also know you as their Savior. That, that's all the time we have today. So we'll pick up in verse 16 in the next Bible study.